Mr. Bimin Prasad, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Reddy is making some very, very disparaging remarks in Hindi. He should, he should be careful. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, will, I will let you know what he said uh, later. Uh, before I start, Mr. Speaker, let me say this. You know, I don't necessarily agree with Honorable Nawaikula when he puts one individual in Fiji first responsible for the mess that they've created. I think it's the whole government led by the Prime Minister himself. So let's not personalize issues. At the outset, Mr. Speaker, I will state this plainly obvious that this bill is a product of dictatorship, pseudo-democracy, and my way or the highway approach in governance to ensure continuity of the Fiji First rule in this country. This is simply no other way to describe this. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Speaker. When the motion to introduce this bill, Understanding Order 51, was moved by the Honorable Attorney General on Monday, I spoke about the right of government to make new laws or change existing laws. Governments, Mr. Speaker, normally do this to ensure conformity of the laws to one, court judgments, exposing laws in the legislation following interpretation of learned judges or judges. Ensuring laws are flexible with technological advancements, changing demographics and or international norms. Three, progressive in tune with international norms. And four, promoting social, political and economic advancement. Mr. Speaker, the proposed changes do not fulfill any of the above intentions. The changes do not remotely resemble the flaws exp exposed by the High Court about registration of names of voters following the successful case in the Court of Disputed Retains by Honorable Niko Nawaikula. His name was removed from the National Register of Voters by the Supervisor of Elections, and he lost his parliamentary seat. This is after Honorable Nawaikula himself said during debate on changes to electoral legislation in Parliament on 7 June that his name was on the certificate, on the birth certificate was different. He admitted that in Parliament. Almost immediately, the supervisor of elections then referred Honorable Nawaikula to FICEC. He then proceeded to remove him from the register of voters. This is despite the fact that Honorable Nawaikula has been using and known as the same person, no identity crisis, no identity theft, as claimed by the AG when he moved the bill. And not mention that Honorable Nawaikula's nomination, Mr. Speaker, in elections in 2014 and 2018 was approved by the supervisor of elections using the same name until he elected this parliament himself. I think it's, it's a real joke, Mr. Speaker. And, you, and I know you personally came under attack from people who perceived that you had removed Honorable Nawaikula as a member of parliament, when in fact, when the actual fact, it was the communication from the supervisor of elections to your office alerting you of his status as a non-voter, thereby resulting him automatically relinquishing his parliamentary seat. Mr. Speaker, in June, Parliament by acclamation deemed to be a majority because of government's numbers passed Amendment to Electoral Act 2014, Electoral Registration of Voters Act 2012. Three months later, we are being asked to pass amendments to legislation that underwent intense scrutiny, Mr. Speaker, by the Parliamentary Standing Committee. And we all made submissions uh, to that Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights before being brought into Parliament. And this brings me to remind Parliament of the Committee's earlier recommendation contained in its review report of the 2018 general election. And the key recommendation in that was a comprehensive review, and it was, I thought it was a good recommendation by the Committee. that all key recommendations should be reviewed after the last two general elections. Government chose to ignore that, and, and they brought piecemeal changes to the uh, legislation. And the reason, Mr. Speaker, to suit government's agenda 
and camouflage the incompetency of the supervisor of elections. And this is not the first time, Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time it has been done to protect the supervisor after he lost yet another major case in the court. The supervisor's failure rate in removing candidates for elections as well as members of parliament is alarming. Why? Because the investigation and cases instituted on the basis of his complaints were flimsy and frivolous. Yet he seems to be cloaked in an aura of invincibility. At least he thinks he is, Mr. Speaker. Nobody else in any normal circumstances with so many failures would have remained in their job. The supervisor keeps running to FICIC when he thinks he has caught someone flouting the law. And when he almost always fails, we as the highest court of the land are asked to change laws to make the government and the supervisor look good. His defiance, this is the highest court of the land, his defiance of the former electoral commission was exposed by the court of appeal. You don't understand the, this is the, this is the supreme law making body. Order. His defiance, his Order. defiance of the former electoral commission, Mr. Order. Speaker, was exposed by the Fiji Court of Appeal in November 2016. What happened? In February 2017, the electoral decree is brought into parliament with changes to confirm the supervisor's interpretation of deadline of three-day timeline for ruling objections against candidates. We are asked again to rubber stamp an act of incompetency and defiance of the election commission by the supervisor. The objection that was upheld in August 2014 by the Electoral Commission in respect of the Fiji First candidate was rejected by the supervisor when he's both constitutionally and electorally bound to abide by the decisions of the Electoral Commission. However, Mr. Speaker, the Commission engaged an independent counsel to appeal and resulted in a damning judgment again against the supervisor, but he didn't worry because the law was going to be changed to suit him. He then lost cases. He reported to FICA against the then MP Ratu Tikoda, as well as the then Education Minister Honorable Mahendra Reddy. The supervisor of elections was exposed yet again in the case against the Soralpa leader, Sitibani Rambuka, in a judgment given just two days before the 2018 elections. The judgment exposed the supervisor's failure to duly, to duly and legitimately, legitimately register political parties by gazetting the registration as required by law. At this time, he again overplayed his card against Honorable Noai Kula, that the Court of Dis Disputed Returns, Mr. Speaker, wasn't interested in. So no wonder, despite these repeated failures, he's still in the job. But others are not so lucky, although they've also supported and defended the Fiji First Government. Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time laws have been tweaked changed or major amendments made to them. Why? Because there were impositions in the past. And you know that, uh, Mr. Speaker. Let me also um, say this, Mr. Speaker. There's, there's a lot that has happened. A lot of water has passed under the bridge due to the change in political climate over the last 15 years. But nothing beats the avalanche of legislation like this bill brought under Order 51, you know, and we have, we have raised this issue before. Again, Mr. Speaker, you know, this brings me to the point that we just found out yesterday. The suspension by the President based on the advice of the Judicial Services Commission of the Solicitor General. This bill and his suspension are both linked to the recent Court of Disputed Returns Judgment. The Solicitor General represented the supervisor of elections against Honorable Nawai Kula and his lawyers. Soon after the judgment, the Honorable Attorney General launched a skating, a skating attack against lawyers on both sides. You know, for and accusing them of failing to uphold the Constitution in terms of voter registration details despite the fact that the birth certificate was not needed to be produced while registering as a voter. What happens next, Mr. Speaker? It is announced that the bill will be tabled in Parliament, 
And both, I know from the media reports, both the supervisor of election and the election commission actually welcomed it. So, why do we need such a drastic and draconian change? The Honorable Attorney General himself is known to be saying that the elections, according to the Constitution, need to be free and fair. And we had the same law under which 2014 and 2018 elections were held. So is he saying that the elections in 2014 and 18 were not free and fair? I mean, you know, these are legitimate questions that people ask. So, Mr. Speaker, when the Honorable Attorney General was, when he presented the bill, he said that it is not going to affect married women in this country because they will have to go back and change it. If that is the case, then why is he hell-bent on pushing this law? What is, what is, order, order. what is the need to bring this law now after the court did not provide any direction? Court did not say, go and change the law. The court simply said that the supervisor of elections did not follow the law. So, Mr. Speaker, it is, it is quite uh, surprising why the Solicitor General was suspended. Is it true? And the question I want to ask, is it, is it true he was suspended as a result of the failed case against Honorable Nawai Kula? Is it true because he was advised, it wasn't a, he advised the Attorney General that it wasn't a case to be taken up legally? And the Honorable Attorney General kind of alluded to it. You, you, you kind of alluded to it. Honorable, just, just, just. Is it true that the just, supervisor of elections stick, filed a complaint against stick to the bill. Judicial Services Commission as legal practitioner's unit? Is it true that the Honorable Attorney General asked him to resign? Is it true that the Prime Minister asked him to resign? Stick to the bill. These, these, are, these, are, important, these are important questions, Mr. Speaker, because his suspension is related to the court case. Because the Honorable Attorney General is on record attacking the Solicitor General and all the lawyers in the case. Finally, Mr. Speaker, what I would like to say, you know, we have about thousand deaths directly due to COVID cases and those who died with existing conditions but with COVID positive status. 30% of our people were in poverty before the COVID crisis. Now it's estimated that about 50% of the people are living in poverty. Yet, this government just after a few months of having deliberated on the electoral laws, bring this law again just because it didn't like the judgment of the Court of Disputed Returns. Simple. This is a sideshow to distract the country from the real problems that stick, we are facing. Stick to the bill. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we do not support this bill. We do not support this stick bill. The... Thank you. Sorry. Honorable Prime Minister, you have the floor. Thank you. Choose. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak in support of the bill uh, presented before the House by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Economy. Mr. Speaker.